Today we are going to talk about how high-end restaurants, especially in the Western countries, increase their revenue by on partable, uh, how they increase their partable revenue or boost their profit by architecting your our choice, right? And it's so subtle, yet, uh, you know, they do that through marketing that, you know, there is no way you catch that that's happening. So first of all, if you ever visited or if you ever go to a, a high-end restaurant, uh, mid-scale to a high upper, upper high-end or high-end, you would realize that as soon as you walk in and when the hostess comes, uh, takes you to your seat, you see a bunch of wine glasses on the table, right? And it's there by design. And then when you take a seat and they hand you the wine menu. Now, as soon as you order your drinks and they realize that you're not going to order wine, they take the glasses away. So why is that? Why do they keep the wine glasses on the table to begin with and why do they take it away? So it's rooted in uh, human psychology, right? Uh, think about it. The wine, and they give you the wine menu. Uh, it's all, The wine menu is already on the table. So it's them nudging you and telling you it's it's acceptable for you to drink wine, right? So it's acceptable to drink wine. Uh, that's one. And number two is we humans have this tendency of uh, this thing called loss aversion, right? We don't want to lose something. And then when you say, oh, I don't want to drink wine, they take this uh, wine glasses from the table away. The other reason, you know, why they choose wine and not any other drinks, it's probably because, you know, if you say uh, order... Uh, Wine's very subjective, right? Wine's very subjective. So what they do is, you know, they can charge uh, an obscure, a brand name bottle of wine that you have never heard of, a hundred dollars, right? Or seventy dollars, or eighty dollars, ninety dollars. Whereas that wine bottle could have been, you know, purchased for six dollars. You do not know. It's very hard to put a dollar amount to that wine value. Whereas suppose it's a, it's a beer, uh, whether it's Heineken or whether it's another brand of beer, you know how much that costs. Like a bottle of Heineken is gonna cost you like, you know, on average, no more than $7, they could probably charge you a best $15. They cannot get away by charging you like $50 because you're gonna be like, no way I'm paying for that. So again, that whole thing, table, that whole ambience and the whole t environment is set up in such a way that, you know, you come in, you see the wine glasses on the table. Uh, so that's a small micro nudge to you to say, hey, uh, it's okay to uh, drink wine, right? Number two, it's acceptable. It's okay to drink wine. And number two is when you say you are not going to drink it, it's going to take it away. Uh, and, you know, number three is it just does because wine is very relative uh, in a bottle of, you know, I do not know, a bottle of wine from France could be $8 or $10 or $12. Well, I don't know whatever the price is, but, you know, they can up market and as much as high as possible with all these fancy words. And you think, you know, you're drinking um a very expensive wine and that's why it tastes good i mean there have been blind testing that's done that shows you know the same uh wine uh, tastes different when they tell you the price ahead of time so it's all again you know most restaurants uh high-end at least they you know basically play with our uh psychology uh, and, you know, in terms of, yeah, we can all like, you know, yes, we all like to drink wine sometimes, or maybe you enjoy it and it's because with your meal, but it's ask yourself, why not bring the wine glass or the wine when you, after you ordered it, why it's already there in the ta on the table waiting for you to kind of say, oh, I don't want to drink. I'm not going to drink wine tonight. Or I'm not drinking anything. And then they will like, let me get this out of your way. So hope that helps. Uh, and, you know, obviously I'm not saying don't drink wine, but I'm all at the point here is that, you know, how marketing can, uh, uh, neuromarketing actually can help and nudge your customers to spend more. And obviously when you start drinking, what happens is you basically uh, become more cherry, more happy, more less, you know, calculative and you tend to you know order more stuff be in a good mood and when you have one glass you will probably have two glass and it keeps on going and going uh, and then obviously it just increases their 
partable revenue and then when with partable revenue they're basically increasing the profit there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing absolutely wrong with it don't get me wrong what i'm saying is that you know there's every step of our life uh, we have, uh, you know, we are getting marketed and we are selling things. And the question is, you know, if you're in business or if you're in whatever line of work you're in, how are you going to apply that to your line of work so that, you know, you nudge your clients, your prospects to, uh, you know, spend more. Now, again, don't take, I'm not saying, you know, don't take, a, I'm not saying take advantage of them, right? I'm saying, you know, if you're ethical and you know your product or services can help someone, how can you design something so that you're nudging them to take action is what I'm saying. And let this be an example of, you know, how restaurants have high end restaurants have actually done it so well that, you know, we all participate in it with that. Thank you. And until next time, bye bye.